Svo bara byrja. How are we on timing? Five minutes. <laughs> All right, so 10, 15, 20, something like that. Okay, so hi everyone, I'm Guðmundur Arnar, I'm from uh, Academias. Uh, my background is marketing. Uh, I was working in marketing for probably, what, 20 years or something like that. Most of my uh, life in the, in the workforce pre for starting my own, own company. I'm a C the CEO and co-founder of Academias, uh, and that's my main role today, and, uh, which is a management school. We also help companies create their own schools, so we're always thinking about how we can use education to change people's basically behavior, teach them something new, so they can uh, you know, do better at their current job or grow to be uh, doing something uh, uh, more and bigger. Uh, during my years in marketing, uh, I was always, and I was working with Iceland Air, uh, Bauer, another airline, a bank, Nova, a telecommunication company. Uh, I so often uh, had a, you know, a, a cast full of, full of cash uh, to create a big campaign with a product that was better priced, uh, was offering more value than the competition was uh, offering. But still, even though we had, you know, so much money behind it to introduce it to the market and tell every, everyone about it, it failed. And, you know, doing everything exactly like the marketing texts say that we should go about things. And, uh, you know, this, you know, happens. And, you know, so often we don't have a clue why it happens, because we've kind of hit all the boxes. And, uh, you know, after probably 15 years or 10 years in, in you know, doing marketing the traditional way, I came across uh, a new field, which is basically just blowing up right now, which is called behavioral economics. It's sometimes uh, described as, as nutsy. And uh, the reason why I found that interesting is because of cases like this one. Here we have a, a, a real choice set. These are, these are subscriptions to The Economist. This is on their website uh, a few years back. And there are three options. The first option is to, uh, subscribe, to uh, subscribe to The Economist website, and that's $59, uh, to get a print-only subscription, which is uh, $125 but then you could also get the print and the online one, and that also costs 125. So, because everybody that basically was exposed to these choices, uh, they weren't blind, so they knew that it didn't make any sense to you know, select the middle option. So 16% of the, of, the, uh, uh, of the cohort uh, chose the, was choosing the web subscription, but 84% uh, was choosing you know, getting both. Nobody was choosing the middle option. It's, you know, of course, makes no sense either. So then, of course, we take that away, right? It makes no sense. Nobody wants it. It's, it's a choice that, you know, nobody wants. We, of course, we, we stop offering it. So uh, they made some experiments, and economists as well. This was one of the uh, big, you know, pop cases, which was covered in the media quite a lot, the marketing media. So, but uh, when changing the choice set and taking the middle option away, that, changed everything. So by taking an option out of the equation that nobody wanted, then the number of people that was choosing only the web subscription increased to 68%, and the uh, print and web subscription was uh, 32%. Meaning the overall for the company, for the economist, was a you know, huge loss. So how is that possible? You know, how, how, how can that be? And this is like because I've been talking to uh, 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 healthcare, both companies and institutions and so forth, uh, quite a lot because this is, you know, uh, big there. When I was working with Íslandsbanki, uh, it's kind of the same when you're, you know, getting somebody to live a healthier life and, you know, to save money. It's we're basically pressing the same buttons. So uh, there is a huge intention action gap. You know, we know we're supposed to, you know, exercise, eat healthy, uh, take our medicine and so forth and so forth, but then we just don't do it though. Uh, and you know, big marketing campaigns telling us, you know, how to change our lives to, you know, live longer, be happier, smile more, and you know, all that. Uh, still, people choose the opposite option. And how can that make sense? Because we are optimizing our own happiness in life, so we should be uh, should be choosing uh, choosing differently. So when I came across this guy, this is Daniel Kahneman. He got the Nobel Peace Prize in, in uh, the Nobel Prize for Economics in 2002. 
uh, and he basically gave us a model to, to think about it, how the brain works and why we're making you know, these uh, uh, irrational choices in a kind of predictable way. So it's kind of, you know, us as humans, we are predictably irrational. And uh, this book, if you want to uh, uh, learn more about Daniel Kahneman, you know, this is a, a bestseller on Amazon, has been since it was released. And the, uh, what he talked about when he got the Nobel, Nobel Prize, uh, when he talked about the, the brain and the brain having two systems. It's not about the right brain or the, the left brain. It's kind of different places, you know, all around, the, all around, uh, all around our brains. And all of our, all of our brains are exactly the same. They haven't changed a lot. I mean, it's kind of, it, it works in many ways similar to when we were living in the forest. And, you know, uh, basically making sure that lions didn't eat us. And so many of our decisions are actually based on using the same mechanics today as basically back then, thousands of years ago. And just to uh, explain to you how these two systems work, uh, if I ask you now what's two plus two, what comes to mind? Four, of course. What's the capital uh, of Denmark? Shout it out. Uh, what's the capital of France? Yeah, now you think I'm crazy. If I would put you in a brain scan, you know, and, and basically just to analyze what's going on in your brain while answering these, you know, silly questions, uh, I wouldn't really see that much. You know, all, all the lights would be basically out because this just happens. The answers, they pop up. Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, you do it automatically. You don't have to think. And it's actually kind of hard to say something else than the right answer. This is system one. And... Uh, Psychologists, uh, they say that, you know, probably between 95, 99% of all the choices we make in life are there. And we're making, you know, thousands of choices every day. Okay, so system two, uh, and just to give you an example of that as well, if I, if I ask you now what's 365 times 58, what comes to mind? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, we could break it. I mean, it would be awful. We have, would, it, was like, it would be like, like going to the gym and lifting like heavy weights. And, uh, you know, if I would fall, you're not going to die. You're not going to fail on a test if you, you know, don't go through it here now. So you're not going to do it. It's just too difficult. And so you would rather not do. Uh, these are basically the two systems that we use when approached with all the different choices we have in life. For example, when you woke up this morning and, you know, we're coming, you started here early or... At lunchtime, yeah. So when we were driving here this morning, uh, most of you woke up with your phone, you know, basically going off. You know, most of us are using the alarm there. And you had to decide, should I snooze? Should I wake up now? Should I, you know, uh, go through my emails, look at the social media? Should I go take the shower? Or should I have something to eat? Should I wake up the kids now or later? Should I go to, you know, wear my blue jeans today or the red ones? Or, and just the choices just pile up, pile up. And it's many hundred choices that you basically had to make just to get to this place this morning. By not using system one to get through all these choices, using system two, it would probably take you a week. So it's kind of a survival mechanism for us. It helps us basically just you know, go through the day and, and survive with you know, all these different choices that we have to take constantly. So our brain is a, is a masterpiece of isolating stuff around us using small signals in the environment to help us make quick decisions. But because of that, we often make irrational choices. But they are usually small choices, so they don't matter that much, most of them. So we're optimizing for time, so it doesn't matter. But sometimes it's more important choices. For example, living a healthy life, uh, continuing to go to the gym, or something like that. And because we're so irrational with so many of our choices, uh, there is something uh, that's being profiled constantly that we call cognitive biases. It's basically irrational choices, you know, given in, 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 in certain uh, contexts and, and environments that we do uh, on a, uh, in a basically predictable way. And uh, by manipulating the context, and like you saw with the economist uh, choices, subscription choices, by taking out the middle option, the huge changes in uh, 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 that and uh, how people were basically making a, making a choice. 
This is the toolbox that Amazon is using, Facebook is using, Google is using, Procter and Gamble is using, the government of the UK is using, Denmark is using, the government in the US is using, but basically helping us, nudging us to make better decisions without them having to, you know, ban us doing something or change the law. So this is a toolbox that's basically revolutionizing marketing. It's changing how negotiating uh, is taught. It's, uh, you know, revolutionizing, uh, you know, how we go about selling and so many different, different fields, fields. Because it basically teaches us how to work with humans. And humans are more like Homer Simpson than uh, a Spock in Star Trek. Because we are trying to go through the day without, uh, without uh, with as little hassle uh, as possible. Because, you know, we want to get to the things that you really wanted to, spend time with friends or our family and so forth. So all the other, you know, different things that basically, you know, process we have to go through through the day, we just want to basically, you know, go on with it and, and kind of without thinking. So just a few, few examples. Uh, uh, on this chart, you see uh, the, uh, the countries in red. Uh, they have in common that if you want to be an organ donor, you actually have to sign up for it. So, you know, it's usually done when you get your driver's license. You sign up for being an organ donor. All of these countries have spent billions and billions of, of uh, uh, kroner to basically convince people that it's a good idea and, you know, we're helping each other and, you know, we should all do that. Uh, and this is the success. The only difference between the two, uh, two colors, uh, the two groups of countries, is that the green ones, they actually have it as a default. So if you don't want to be an organ donor, you have to choose that. Basically take it, take it off the box. So solving the solution without spending one kroner in marketing, just changing you know, how we make people uh, decide. So more example, uh, here is a, another research from the UK. Uh, it was uh, basically parents getting SMS messages uh, for them to uh, uh, sign their kids up for educational support. And the, uh, orange, uh, uh, the uh, orange boxes so, uh, on, the, on, the, on the chart, uh, the orange color is basically what the teachers, you know, that uh, took part in the experiment, what they thought would happen, but the results uh, the real ones uh, are the blue lines. So the first group, uh, the standard group, they got an SMS. Uh, the parents of the kids got an SMS and were uh, motivated or asked, you know, go on this website and you can sign your uh, kid up for, you know, getting the support. And as you can see, not a lot happened. Uh, in the middle group, uh, then the, you know, again, an SMS was sent, but uh, the wording was differently. Uh, basically saying, you know, if you want your kids to get a, you know, the support, uh, answer this uh, SMS by, you know, saying start. And then, you know, the, the group, you know, grew, you know, quite a lot uh, from the control group. But, but basically sending an SMS and telling the parents, uh, you know, the same thing. You can, you know, we're signing your kid up to, uh, to get a support. And if you don't want them to get the support, uh, answer this SMS with stop. And basically... Almost all the parents signed up for it. And we're talking about their kids, and this was a you know, real-world uh, experiment. Here's another crazy experiment as well that shows you know, how System 1 can actually play, uh, play around with us. Uh, this is from Yale University, uh, Quaker. It's like a replacement for, a, for breakfast. Uh, it's not uh, that known in Iceland. So the first app, uh, then the, uh, the back of uh, the uh, uh, Quaker breakfast uh, squares was framed with, it, inclu it, it, in uh, it has six grams of protein. And, you know, when men asked how likely are you to buy them uh, as a replacement for a meal, framed in that way, the message, 70% of them said, yeah, you know, I think I would do that. But by framing, framing it in a different way, saying, uh, you know, it has as much protein as an egg. Then it jumped to 29%. And the uh, interesting thing about that is that there are six grams of protein in an egg. It's basically the same, uh, the same choice. It's just how you, how you frame it. Uh, also with the, uh, uh, with the uh, revenues and, and customs in, in the UK, uh, you know, there's a big chunk of, of people in the UK that never pay their taxes on time, huge problem, advertising campaigns, constantly trying to remind and so forth did experiments using this toolbox 
Uh, the best research that they got was basically using the same letter, the same envelope, nothing, nothing changed except putting in like bold letters on top of the letter, you know, when people were taking it out of the envelope, saying that nine out of 10 every UK citizens pay their taxes on time. And a double percentage uh, uh, increase in the, in the ones that, uh, you know, uh, went to green. So small changes that can have huge effects. And I'm going to have the same problem with the videos as probably the ones uh, before me here. But it's actually, it's OK, because I think I don't have a lot of time. So I'm just going to speak through it. This is from a canted camera show on TV. And it shows basically that everyone there is an actor, except one, which is basically the subject, the, uh, the victim in this experiment. And as you can see, they're all going in an elevator. And everybody's, you know, have their back to the door. And this is something that you don't do when you go to, you know, in an elevator. So as you can see, the subject there, I didn't know what was going on. You know, he was looking around. This is really strange. Uh, and of course, he does the same. And it's really difficult for us when we think that everybody around us is, is you know, living life, doing something, consuming, uh, making choices in, in one way. You know, this is how, you know, uh, products and, and uh, lifestyle, you know, become trendy and trend upwards, is that we, when we get the feeling that everybody is doing something. Because social norming is, is, is one of these uh, cognitive biases, which basically says that, you know, because of system one, we look so much at people around us to uh, know, you know, which direction or, or which choice we should make. That's why, you know, uh, companies that are selling, for example, all kinds of creams and, you know, cosmetics for you, for you girls, uh, they use, uh, like, big famous movie stars and, and so forth. And influencers are a, are a big thing, and, you know, they're, you know, people sometimes don't think a lot of them. But they are actually the perfect tool for us that you know, want to change people's behavior to make it easy for our uh, cohort to basically choose our products or choose our service or you know, what it is that we, that we wanna influence, uh, want them to do. It's also interesting that uh, our brain is hardwired to look at faces. So we have a lot of interest in people. And this is quite critical when we're trying to motivate people to do something. So, for example, in sports, the best way to get people uh, uh, interested, motivated, and so forth is something that you, of course, all know, is to have role models. You know, make stars out of athletes that are doing something interesting. And, you know, if they haven't really, you know, struck the gold, but, you know, they have an interesting story, they've been, you know, doing something great, they're on a track, is basically to get them to open up, make a role model out of them, make them human and give people access to them with interviews and, and, you know, give people uh, the ones that you want to influence, give them access into, you know, that person's life. The other problem is with ads, for example, if you have two faces in an ad, that actually decreases the power of the ad. One face is much stronger than, than two. And it's the same with messaging. You know, we want to make everything simple, as simple as possible. That's the first step we have to take when we use behavioral economics and nudging and, you know, uh, more than communication to get uh, results. Uh, and ICE as well, I'm going to jump, jump over that. So, you know, always try to use role models, use, uh, you know, people, real people in your, in your, in your ads and when you're trying to get people to uh, do what, they, what, you, what, what you want them to do. And here we have a, a real world example as well. Uh, here we have basically have the same communication meet Christina, and it's an animal, and then a lady, and the text goes, she loves to run around uh, the campus, but one day she tripped on a soda and uh, injured her leg. Now she can't run around anymore. You know, same places, you know, uh, everything, everything identical, but it was 50% almost uh, increase in, in uh, results by having a human there. So it's, it matters. And thinking about it when you're investing in marketing, uh, how it can basically decrease the dependence on you guys having a lot of cash. This can make, make it much uh, uh, less uh, costly for you get the, to get the results that you, that you want. It's also that uh, when we're making decisions because of system one, and it's kind of like when we were, when we were in the forest, and we saw something moving in the, in the trees, and we were like thinking, yeah, is this a lion or is it just something else? Like back in the days, 
you didn't really want to wait and see, yeah, I think it has teeth. Uh, you know, it's probably, a, you know, it might be a lion. I'm going to look a little bit longer. As soon as I saw the you know, first signals of, of something there that could, you know, potentially eat us, we would just run. And this is the kind of the way that we're using today. We don't have to worry about being eaten anymore. But when you're making decisions using system one, which is the old brain, part of the brain, we kind of use the same technique. You know, we look at, you know, small signals, uh, cues in the environment. Uh, is somebody that we respect or look up to doing something? Yeah, then we should do that as, as well. So uh, people don't really want to spend time, you know, looking and reading everything about what they're doing. Data basically doesn't really sit with people, but stories do. So we have to think about these things before we uh, put something together if you want to be successful. It's also interesting, and it connects to this, that the more famous we are, uh, the more people like us. So famous people are liked by you know, uh, more people. So the more famous we become, everything else equal, uh, you know, that has a huge benefit. And if we're a product or you know, offering something, uh, then chances are people are gonna, gonna buy us. Because familiarity is so valuable. Because if you know something, it's so easy to buy it or make a choice based on, based on that. The biggest, uh, uh, the biggest uh, uh, message basically in marketing and something that you know, a lot of companies do on a regular basis is to do a total rebrand. Which you see is a big, big mistake because it's all about you know, people knowing us, recognizing us, making it easy for them to choose, choose us. So if you're a real estate agent, you're all, you always have your pictures in the paper you know, and you're advertising all the, all the assets that your, your uh, house that you're selling you really shouldn't be taking new pictures of you or changing your you know, haircut or you kind of you know, should even just you know, try to wear the same suit on the, on the, on the pictures because it makes it easier for us to, uh, for, for, the, for the cohorts to basically uh, uh, know and uh, be reminded of, of us and, and so forth. Also, uh, uh, all research on uh, effectiveness in, in advertising is basically supporting this. I mean, the biggest effects in you know, all the campaigns in, a, in, a, in the main ad uh, database in the UK, IPA, uh, it's basically never the rational ads or the campaign or messaging that basically hit it. It's usually the emotional ones, the, you know, the stories, very visual, something human, something that we can relate to. And uh, uh, if, we, if we take it to a completely different direction, is that, for example, the Red Cross and the ones, you know, trying to get, get people to donate money to charities. Uh, you know, uh, you probably remember this picture. It was awful, you know, one of the refugees in one of the crises that we've had for the uh, last year. You saw this little boy on a beach that had drowned after trying it, but a horrible, uh, almost, go, go, uh, almost go to tears just, you know, thinking about it now. But we've been seeing pictures and reading stories about thousands and thousands of people going through the same thing. But seeing this picture of this one boy, and we knew the name, the AIDS, we got to know the background, it changed everything. And the do donation skyrocketed uh, after that. So it's all based on just how our brain works. You know, and this toolbox and new thinking of that basically is, uh, uh, is, is, has its home in, in behavioral economics. How are we on timing? I think we have to finish. We have to finish? OK, then I'm going to find a slide that's, uh, yeah, let's end here. OK, I could, of course, you know, talk for hours and hours more about this. Uh, you can maybe ask questions if you have time in the, in the, for the panel. I just wanted to show you this. I mean, uh, social media, which has revolutionized so much. Uh, for you guys, you know, working in sports and so forth, uh, you know, this is people uh, chasing people, people, uh, you know, sharing something and, and so forth. Uh, and because we're kind of, you know, the Homer Simpson, we you know, still have this old brain, we're, you know, fixated on people, uh, and we can't really not do it. You know, we, as soon as we see something, we, and if it's a person, even an animal, we look straight in the eyes. We always, you know, start with the eyes. And, uh, and the closer the person is to us, you know, we, it's easier for us, and it's easier to get people's attention if it's somebody from Iceland. You know, and we can see that. Uh, compared to somebody that's from uh, you know a different part of the part of the world, so it's kind of the closeness factor you know that uh, uh, that can help a, help a lot. And I just wanted to show you this because there is a lot of talk in 
you know, f nobody on Facebook and social media and, and so forth. And basically, these are new numbers from Iceland. Uh, you know, the, uh, the top picture you see there, 22, 79%, almost 80% of Icelanders are daily on Facebook. And then somebody is going to be thinking in the, in the room, yeah, but the kids, man, well, you know, I have teenagers. You know, nobody's there. Ah, that's not quite right. And because it's behind there, it's 89%. It's basically 10 percentage points more. People 34 years and younger, uh, 10 percentage points more than if I look at the population as a whole in Iceland. So actually, it's, you know, the, this year is share is stronger. And I'm just going to leave this one uh, for up, uh, up there for you to look at. And this is basically Instagram. So, I mean, these are your vehicles, you know, to get your messages out. But use the psychological tricks that are in this toolbox, and you're going to supercharge uh, what you're doing, you know, and no matter uh, what you're trying to convince people to, to, uh, to do. Thank you.